when Alexander the Great was travelling through India, he came across a god that was very similar to his own. The god was called Kartiki or Murugan, and he reminded Alexander a lot of his own god, Dionysus. So he started to draw conclusions and ask questions. He came across effigies, rituals and things like that, what just reminded him of his own god. They was born in the same town, the same name town. So he started to come to the conclusion that maybe um, Dionysus was born in India and moved to Greece afterwards. And Kartikeya's name actually means son of the Pleiades. Both Dionysus and Kartikeya were intimately associated with the Seven Sisters. And even in their infancy, they was classed as the nursemaids of the the God's son. Both of them were born from earth mothers and divine fathers from heaven. Dionysus carried a spear into battle against his enemies and so did Kartikeya. His was called the Val Spear, both magical items. Both of them also went on to lead great armies and fight in major battles for Shiva and for Zeus. Now there was a play created around 500 BC called the Seven Against Thebes, which is a story about ancient Greece and a battle that went on. This story also draws similarities to an Akkadian epic, the story of Era the Plague God. and the seven Sibeta, who are called upon to destroy mankind. Sibeta are a group of seven war gods that appear in Akkadian literature. Some people see the Sibeta as actual representations of the seven sisters or the Pleiades. Some people see them as foreign gods and some people call them the divine seven of Ilum. Ilum was an ancient civilization based around modern day Iran in the west. Ilum is also considered a language that is unrelated to any other language. Some historians argue that Elamites are very closely related to the modern day Lurs. The Lurs are modern day Iranians that live in the western mountain range and they're also the modern day ancestors of the Guttians. Feridun was a mythical king in Iran who was from the Pishtani dynasty. The Pishtani dynasty was one of the first dynasties in pre-Iran and they went on to create the first kings and also was the first people in the world apparently. In Iranian mythology, the Bactaris are supposed to be descendants of Feridun. The Bactaris are descendants of the 27 Kurdish tribes of Lawston and Kuyamaz was one of the first founders of the dynasty and the first king. So Lud was the son of Shem but he was also the grandson of Noah. The descendants of Lud are usually connected to the descendants of the Anatolian people. You see many of these laws they share DNA with Anatolians or the Caucasus range. The Plasgians had a far reach in ancient times. The Plasgians were said to have spread throughout Greece in ancient times. And when the Danans came from Egypt, they were also called the Plasgians. 
why would the Greeks just let a, a tribe, an outside tribe, just wander in and assimilate to the Greeks? And we also know that the ancient Greeks was basically run by the Israelites. The Greeks say the Danans came to Argos and demanded that they take part in the royalty there. They claimed to be descendants of Lau and said they was part of the royal family. They had royal blood. Now the Danans can be found in Irish mythology. Some people say they came from the heavens and some people say they sprang up from four cities. After a ferocious battle, they took control over the whole of Ireland. A Greek historian wrote some interesting things about the Danans. He wrote, the aliens were drove out of their country. They were cast ashore in Greece and other regions. They were notable men and their leaders were Danis and Cadmus. But the greater number was driven into what is now called Judea. He says the colony was headed by a man called Moses and he was supposed to be a wise and courageous man. You see, the ancient Judeans were very similar to the Greeks in appearance and in culture. A depiction from them from years ago shows them with light skin, straight noses. Flavius Josephus, a Roman historian, writes that there was indistinguishable the Greek and the Judeans. From this we can extrapolate that the British god Belus originated from Egypt and was named by the Tuatha de Danann, who originated on the Pleiasiac river of Egypt. So as you can see, you just make a full circle and then this all relates to the, the obviously Jesus Christ. It's just carried on the story. So as you can see, we've followed the pre-Pelasgian people all the way through Iran. It just proves that once it was all connected, it was all one civilization. And after a giant war that's written in many epics, obviously they were split. Uh, this is when the tongues were divided, the Babylon and everything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can see the connection to all these gods that Obviously, these, all these old gods are connected. You've got one side, the Pleiadians, and you've got the other side. I call them the Anunnaki, but you can call them Syrians, elongated skull people, giants, whatever you want to call them. And I just wanted to show you in this video how everything connects and, you know, the peoples. Even when you look at the, the gutty people that still live in Iran now, blue-eyed, blonde-haired people. I mean, how did they, how did they end up there? Unless all this story was true, and it's not just mythology.